Okay. Okay. Good morning. So we will start our webinar. Uh, before going directly, uh, I'll introduce myself. Uh, I'm Sanal Hubert Matthews. I'm the principal consultant and director of Canotech Engineering Consultants. We are doing service to marine, offshore, and oil and gas sector. So this is our uh, sixth webinar. Uh, which details uh, high and low pressure mud system uh, of an offshore oil rig. So, in this webinar, we will be seeing like uh, what is the purpose of mud? Uh, why do we need mud in an offshore oil rig? What is the purpose of mud in drilling? Similarly, uh, what are the type of mud? Also, mud systems like uh, high pressure mud. Generally, mud processing, low pressure mud, all these systems, we will go through the concept of the system. Also, we will see the equipment involved in the uh, mud system. And, that, and after the presentation, we will move to the question and answer session. Uh, any queries which you have uh, during the presentation, you can put it in the Q&A icon, which is seen in the uh, webinar page right now. So uh, all those questions we will address at the end of webinar. Okay, so with that, uh, first we will see a video uh, just to understand uh, how the mud system works, like uh, what is the purpose and all these things we will see in a video. When circulated down the drill string and up the hole, drilling mud serves many functions. For example, mud cleans the hole, cools and lubricates the bit and the drill string, lifts cuttings to the surface, carries information about the formations being drilled, stabilizes the well bore, controls formation pressure, and suspends cuttings when pumping stops. One function of mud is to clean the hole. A clean hole allows the bit to drill into uncut formation rock. Here's an example of what can happen when cuttings are not removed off bottom. Mud jets out of the bit and moves cuttings away from the bottom of the hole. The mud then carries the cuttings up the annulus and to the surface for disposal. Heat is encountered downhole. Deep formations can be very hot, and friction from rotating drilling components generates a lot of heat. High temperatures increase drill spring and dip wick. Drilling fluid helps to reduce the temperature in the drill string downhole while drilling. In addition, drilling fluid provides lubrication to the drill string and bit, but also helps prevent wear. Mud stabilizes the hole, keeps it from caving in. As mud moves up the hole, it usually flows by permeable formations. Permeable formations are those that allow fluid to flow. When the mud is next to a permeable formation, pressure forces the liquid part of the mud, the filtrate, into tiny openings or pore spaces in the formation. 
This leaves behind a thin sheath of solid particles, known as mud cake. These solids plaster the side of the hole, much like the plaster on the wall of a building. The wall cake helps keep the hole from caving in. The column of mud in the well creates pressure down hole, called hydrostatic pressure. The hydrostatic pressure of the mud column offsets formation pressure. Mud is the first line of defense in well control. As long as the hole is full of mud that is the right weight, the well cannot kick and perhaps blow out. A kick is the entry of formation fluids into the well bore. The kick forces drilling mud out of the hole. If crew members fail to control a kick, a blowout can occur. A blowout is the uncontrolled flow of drilling mud and formation fluids out of the hole. Mud is also used to obtain information about formations down hole. Mud loggers, by examining cuttings at the surface, can gather important information about the formation being drilled and the conditions down hole. Okay, so we saw the functions of mud. So in the video, we, we saw how the mud acts in a well. Like the main purpose of drilling mud is to have the well stability. Like when we drill deep a hole, like a, an oil, oil well, when we drill it, there's a possibility of caving in, like a collapse of the well. So to prevent that, we use drilling mud with required density, without uh, with uh, required viscosity, everything. So this will be adjusted. We will see in the detail, detailed slides. Also, the purpose of mud is to remove the cuttings, uh, which is inside the well. Also, it holds and lubricates the drill string and bit, because during the drilling process, a lot of heat is generated. So drill bit has to be cooled. Drill bit is the uh, end portion which drills the well. So the bit has to be cooled. So drilling mud, which is pumped through the drill string, that is the drill pipe uh, inside the well. Through it, it is pumped out to, uh, through the drill bit area. So this cools the drill bit. So all the cuttings which is inside is uh, taken out by the mud, which is continuously pumped. And the cuttings which we receive inside the rig, uh, the filtering process all we will describe. So during filtering, uh, I mean, in the, there's a filtering process. Uh, so in the filtering, we get the cuttings uh, and uh, etc. Uh, on the rig, which gives an idea about the uh, layer of solid inside the well. So these much details we can collect on the mud, and mud is this is the purpose of mud in the offshore oil rig. So now we will see the various systems. Uh, before system, we will see the mud like. Uh, how, how many types? We, there are two types mainly, oil-based mud and water-based mud. So oil-based mud will have an oil, will be the base liquid, plus we add chemicals only. Similarly, water-based mud will have water as the water. base and we add chemicals to it. So this water can be fresh water, sea water or brine, brine which is uh, salt water concentrated salt water, which is a brine. So all these systems are available in the rig, like fresh water system is there, sea water system, um, brine separate system is there, base soil system is there. So these all systems combine to uh, prepare whichever mud is required for drilling. So we will see in detail in the future slides. OK, 
Okay, so when we uh, type uh, talk about systems, we can categorize it as two, like high pressure mud system and low pressure mud system. So in high pressure mud system, we can see about mud pumps, mud manifold, uh, and the end point of drive to the well, etc. Also, mud manifold is also called a mud standpipe manifold. So we will see it in detail in the future slides. And about low pressure mud system, uh, we will see about, about the mud pits, mud supercharge pumps, mixing pumps, then uh, shale checkers, mud trough, degasser, desilter, desander. All this will be explained in detail in the coming slides. Okay, so low pressure mud system, we will see how the system functions. So there will be active and reserve pits. So this number of pits, like consider there are eight pits. So uh, there'll be, if we are considering eight pits, there, there, at a time we have few active pits, maybe four or two or uh, six pits, we'll keep it active. And we'll keep uh, two or uh, as uh, two, two numbers or more as reserve pits. So this active pits will be used for the uh, drilling operation uh, which is going on at the moment and the reserve pit will be prepared mud for next uh, anticipated operation or, uh, or preparation will be going on the reserve pits which will not be used in the process but which will be prepared for another process uh, which eventually will be in the pipeline so we will see how the system functions so from all these mud pits there is a there will be suction to a suction header which is feed to supercharged pumps so this supercharged pumps uh, i'll explain the functionality we will see the system and we will go to the functionality this supercharged pumps discharge it to mud pumps so mud pump is the uh, there, there are separate rooms all the mud pits which we described will be in a mud pit room there is a separate room which is a hazardous room also, mud pumps and all these supercharged pumps will be located in a in mud pump room. That is next to room to the mud pit, uh, mud pit room. So the function of supercharged pumps is to feed mud to mud pumps because the mud pump has uh, less capability in taking suction. Like mud pump is a uh, high pressure pump, it can give pressure up to 7,500 psc. General operating will be around. 3000 to 5000 psi range, but it can go up to maximum 7500 psi. So, this mud pumps up to the mud pump uh, entry point, suction point, it is a low pressure system. So, this mud suction and supercharge pump discharge, all this is a low pressure system. So, this will be designed. This low pressure system is designed for 150 psi. So, that is a, a pressure range, that is 10 bar. 150 psi will be the design uh, and the flow rate of the supercharged pumps will be around 1000 uh, gallons per minute 1000 uh, gallons per minute so that will be the supercharged pump there will be generally in the uh, oil mix there will be uh, three supercharged pumps uh, which is like for each mud pump there will be a supercharged pump that is a, a condition so this system explains how the supercharged pumps take suction from mud pit and supplies to mud pump. Okay, now we will uh, go to the. Uh, okay, we're going. There is a bypass from the suction header to the, the mud pump feeding header. So this bypass uh, is to uh, is to be used in case of some emergency. Uh, but there are designs uh, in rigs where even bypass is not provided. Uh, in uh, rigs, uh, the, there is a this bypass is an alternate option it can be provided or it is optional okay so now we saw that the feed reached the mud pump in the previous slides we saw the feed reach mud pump so now we from the mud pumps it is being discharged like the pressure is increased but is discharged so there will be uh, two uh, uh, supply which goes up to main deck. This end point which we see now, the arrow is will be at the aft of main deck. Generally, in offshore context, it will be at the aft of main deck. 
So from there, with the hoses, we supply to drill shop and it goes to mud standby manifold, uh, which is on the drill shop. So mud standby manifold, uh, we will see all this detail in the future slides. So this mud standby manifold is what supplies mud to top drive, which eventually supplies to well uh, through the drill pipe. So this system, if you see the mud pumps, uh, discharge mud at high pressure. So in mud pump area, uh, it has an arrangement that each pump can supply to any header. So there will be two supply headers which go up to main duct cast. From there, hose supplies is given to the uh, drill, drill floor area. This is because the drill floor moves. The drill floor can move on uh, its transverse direction. Oh, and this uh, cantilever can move in the longitudinal direction, that is forward after direction. And the floor can move in the port star. Due to movement, we use flexible hoses to connect these pipelines to the drill floor. So maximum pressure of the mud pump, which we discussed earlier, can go up to 7,500 PSI. But in normal working range, uh, it will be 3,000 to 5,000 PSI. Normal uh, drilling operation will be in 3,000 PSI to 5,000 PSI. In that range, it will be operating. OK, so this high pressure mud system, uh, basically concept is to pump from mud pumps up to mud standby, which will supply to the top drain. And uh, this top drain uh, will be supplying the mud to the uh, through the drill pipe inside the well. Uh, it will be discharged through drill bit area. Uh, which eventually operates. So that operational part we will see next. Okay, now we will see like uh, mud which returns. So th in this uh, slide, we will be what we will be seeing is the mud with cuttings which returns because we already supplied high pressure mud inside the well. So now the once it is discharged through drill bit. The mud with cuttings from well will re return back to diverter housing. There is a process. So from diverter housing, it comes to a mud trough. There will be a mud trough, so it collects the mud. So there will be trip tanks. We will describe detail about trip tanks later in the next slides. So this mud trough applies the mud with cuttings to shaker mud trough. That is another uh, separate mud trough. And there will be generally four or five shakers, uh, shale shakers. That is an equipment. We will see the detail in the next slides. So this shale shaker is actually doing the mud filtering process. Shale shaker uh, removes the cuttings in the mud. So these pipes are laid down and supply is there to shale shakers and mud cleaners. We will see the processing system in the next slide. So this all this process will be low pressure mud system. Uh, it is designed for 150 psi as stated earlier. So uh, this is the entire process. So this uh, about shale shakers and about mud cleaner we will see in the next slide. Trip tank also we will see, we have a separate system for trip tanks. What is the purpose? We will describe. Okay. So with that we will move to. Uh, next system for so even uh, there is a supply from the uh, mud trough to shaker trough line uh, that is a flow line we call it flow line usually sizes will be uh, 14 inch or 16 inch uh, bigger dia pipes so there is a, a supply to trip tanks we will explain about that supply in the uh, trip tank portion okay so earlier slide we saw that the return mud with cuttings from the well has reached the shale shaker. So there is a processing mud processing system, which we will explain here. So below shale shakers, like shale shaker area, there will be shale shakers. One, two, three, four, maybe fifth one will be there. Similarly, there will be mud cleaner, a degasser, which are equipments. We will see the details. So below shale shaker, uh, normally there will be four tanks. In Furix, it can go up to five times. So these tanks will be segregated like the gas or the sander, the center, settling tanks. We'll explain the process. 
usually there will be three pumps like the gas pump diesel pump and diesel pump so these pumps take suction from these tanks which is interconnected with the manifold we can bypass and use with our pump so we will see the process so the gas pump if you take the gas pump it takes suction from uh, the gas tank and supplies to the gas which is an equipment it is called vacuum degasser the purpose is to remove the dissolved gases in the uh, uh, mud fluid so this mud fluid which returns from the well with cuttings will have some dissolved gases there is a possibility of dissolved gases present so to remove the dissolved gases we pump this fluid to degasser which removes the gas and returns the mud to desander tank so that is a process which happens in in the shale shaker area uh, this process is also incorporated and the desander pump which takes suction from desander tank or desilter pump which takes from desilter tank this operation will be parallel which goes to a uh, mud cleaner okay and it discharges it can discharge to settling tank desilter tank or desander tank so there will be discharge manifold which is not shown here so this manifold with the manifold support we can discharge to any tanks and this pumps can be simultaneously used for any operation so the overall operation what is happening here is mud is being screened in the shale shaker okay shale shaker screens uh, it is a vibrating equipment through the uh, with uh, uh, filtering screens of suitable sizes so it separates uh, bigger cuttings smaller cuttings in separate process and this cuttings is actually separated to be removed to a skip uh, or to overboard so both options are there so uh, there is a process which shale shaker does and after the cuttings are removed the mud comes to this degasser tank which is being degassed and taken to desander diesel tanks which is being processed so desander means removal of sand and desilter is fine removal of very small sand particles which is a de, uh, which is called silt so desilt the silt removal and it moves to settling tanks from the settling tanks the mud flows to mud pits so that is a return process so what we discussed in detail is the mud processing and return to mud pits so that is a process so we will see the trip tank system earlier we saw trip tanks so the trip tank has in addition to, uh, two trip tank pumps one will be working one will be standby so this takes suction from trip tank and it discharges to the well so why do we need trip tank so trip tank is uh, like uh, something which uh, actually supplies the tripping operation tripping operation means during drilling uh, we, uh, once we take out the drill string out of the well there will be a requirement to insert sensors to measure the uh, details inside the well so at that time we have to remove the entire drill pipe outside to take the drill bit out maybe if the drill bit is worn out we have to remove the entire drill string out or to remove insert sensors in the well we have to remove the uh, drill pipe and drill bit out so all this process will require taking out of the entire drill string so when we take out there will be gap inside the well which was earlier filled with the drill string and mud so when we remove this gap has to be filled or else there is a possibility of uh, less pressure formation which may collapse the well so trip tanks supply mud to the well during that operation uh, like it is measured trip tank is a uh, measured tank so this supply to the well similarly trip, uh, once we uh, insert the fluid which comes out once we insert the drill pipe, uh, the flow, the mud which comes out can be measured in the trip tank by collecting it from the flow line, which we earlier saw in the uh, mud return system. So that is a basic function of trip tank. Uh, okay, so we will go to the next slide. Okay, before going to the next system, uh, now we discussed in detail about uh, mud like mud supply, mud return, mud processing, etc. So now we will see about the chemicals being mixed in mud. Generally, we uh, store bentonite. There will be a tank 
for storing metadata in the read. Similarly, we store varit. Uh, so varit there will be an approximately uh, three times. Maybe uh, some read store in the four times varit metadata may not be taken uh, during the process. Also, caustic soda, which is stored uh, in the read. Okay, so all these uh, materials will be generally stored in the stack store, which we call it stack room or stack store. So inside the stack room, uh, there is space for storage of all this chemical and chemical mixing uh, processes there, which we see, which we will see next. So these chemicals actually has different properties, like bentonite. Uh, it, it swells in water. Once we mix it with water, uh, it swells and it makes the water uh, like uh, uh, it increases the viscosity of the mud. Uh, like drilling mud, if we have to increase viscosity, we can add bentonite. Similarly, barite is heavier, four times heavier than water. So, once we add barite to the drilling mud, if we have to increase the weight of drilling mud or density of drilling mud, we can add barite. Similarly, for keeping the uh, pH on the alkaline uh, level like 9.5 we add caustic soda so caustic soda is the uh, is one of the dangerous chemical uh, which we handle in an offshore oil rig it has to be handled very carefully because uh, it can cause burns uh, eye burns or it can if it comes into contact with skin etc it can create uh, burns so these are the chemicals which we handle for mud processing, like mud formation. Earlier in the system, we described that the reserve pits in the uh, mud pit room. So this reserve pit uh, will be uh, means will be will be processing mud by using these chemicals. So this chemical mixing system, I mean the uh, mud mixing system, we will see next. Okay, as earlier described, there will be mud pits, active and reserve pits. So suction will be taken from the mud pits to mud mixing pumps this is separate pumps it will be centrifugal pumps capacity of uh, uh, across uh, 1000 yards per minute pumping rate so this mud mixing pumps supplied to mixing hoppers there will be two generally there will be two to three mixing uh, two mixing hoppers and there will be a shear hopper so this mixing hoppers will be will have a search tank on top you will see the photos in the next slide so this mixing mud mixing pump supply to the hoppers and the return discharge comes to a different various pits so it can be directed to different pits so mud pit room has the piping arrangement uh, something like it takes this uh, mud pump this mixing area mixing pumps take suction from the mud pits and it flows through the hoppers so this mixing hopper is area where we uh, add the chemicals like this will be generally located in the stack room this mixing pumps and uh, mixing hoppers will be located generally in the stack room so this mixing hopper is a place where we add chemicals which we described earlier whichever property we need for the mud we add suitable chemicals on the hoppers and it is pumped back to the uh, mud pit rooms okay so that is a mud mixing system Okay, so now what we are seeing is a mud return from shale shaker to mud pits. Earlier we described in the shale shaker area, mud processing area, that the mud uh, return will happen from the uh, shale shaker area after processing to mud pits. So this image shows the return line to uh, mud pits. Okay, so this is a detailed view. We can see the slope of the line. This line is size is 14 inch, which we see in this image. So this is a line which takes uh, comes from the shaker house to mud pits. There will be a slope. Uh, there will be a slope grading uh, which comes to the mud pit. Okay, so. This image, what we are seeing is a mud pit room. Inside the mud pit, we can see the mud return line from shale shaker area, which is marked. So it is uh, the branches are given to each pit. 
Also, just an overview of the mudpit room. A lot of piping we can see huge a huge quantity of piping inside mudpit because for processing mud we need to supply different systems like fresh water, sea water. So all these headers has to be inside the mudpit with separate supply to each pit. And uh, yeah, so that is the overall layout of mudpit room. Okay, this is another layout of mud pit room. In this, we can see a mud agitator. So each mud pit will have mud agitator. The purpose is to prevent mud from solidifying, and uh, it keeps on uh, agitating. I mean, it keeps on moving the mud so that the mud which stays there will have the actual property of the mud. But if we do not keep keep on moving uh, the mud inside the mud pit. He, there is a tendency to solidify. On solidified, it will be difficult to uh, retain it back to the required property. So these mud agitators will be always running. Once the mud pit is in operation, the mud agitators will be always running condition. Okay. We described about mud agitator. So what we are seeing now on the screen is the mud agitator. So it has impellers on the bottom. Are like single or double. Generally, we see single. Some uh, will have double type impellers. So, with which will have motor, which we saw. The motor part is above the uh, pit room, which we can see. And the shaft, jetting shaft and impeller is inside the mud pit. So, this mud pit area is an explosion area, like not explosion. It is a hazardous area. So, generally, due to hazardous area marking, the motors has to be explosion proof so all these agitators will have explosion proof motors so that is a process okay the image what we are seeing now is a mud pump room we earlier described uh, the blue color equipment which we are seeing here is a mud pump so it is a huge unit so generally there will be three mud pumps in offshore oil rig uh, two will be running uh, in condition and one will be in standby so which can generate pressures up to 7500 psi so there is there is uh, the mud pump discharge onwards it is called the high pressure mud system because of the high pressure involved so it will have relief valves so it will have the pulsating damper because of the this mud pump is a positive displacement pump it it adds up pressure so uh, these pumps have relief valve systems to uh, blow off in case the pressure exceeds the descent value. So uh, that is a, that is a mud pump. Okay, this is a, another view of a uh, different mud pump room. The red equipment which we see here is a mud pump. Okay, we will move to the next slide. Okay, this picture what we are seeing is the supercharging pumps. These pumps we described earlier. Supercharging pumps take action from mud pits and supply to the mud pumps. So this supercharging pumps usually in the excess of capacity 1000, 1000 gallons per minute supply. It ensures 1000 gallons per minute supply and these are centrifugal pumps. Uh, the impeller type will be like semi-open type uh, due to the mud uh, pumping. So this is a uh, details of supercharge pumps. The image which we are seeing now is a mud mixing system. We earlier described in mud mixing system there will be hoppers, search tanks, etc. So we can see that in the image now there will be search tanks which supply to the uh, hoppers. So these uh, hoppers uh, mix uh, to the uh, line which is below hopper which is being fed using the mixing pumps so it will go to the required pit where we are going to store the process to mud okay the image which we are seeing now is the mud standby manifold as we described earlier the mud pumps which discharge uh, high pressure mud uh, drilling mud will come to the mud standby manifold. This ma mud standby manifold will be located on the drill floor. So this is designed for 7500 psi. Um, it will be the uh, design pressure for the mud standby manifold. And this uh, mud standby manifold will supply to the uh, top drain. 
which eventually uh, from the top drive it, the mud is going to the inside well through the blow out preventer that is a separate system we will uh, detail we will go to the uh, well control we will be describing inside the well details in the uh, well control webinar so mud standby manifold has uh, isolation valves which can isolate the uh, supply as required similarly this manifold is connected to chalk and gill manifold uh, in the uh, total flow so function of chalk and gill manifold all will, uh, will be covered in a separate webinar so this is the mud sandbag manifold which we generally see in the offshore oil rigs <laughs> Okay, now the slide which we are seeing is the shale shaker. So, sh function of shale shaker is to filter the mud because the mud which returns back with cuttings has to be segregated. So, this cuttings ha segregation happens in the shale shaker. Okay, now what we are seeing is the mud cleaner, which is actually a desander and a, a desilter process. So this mud cleaner, usually one mud cleaner will be uh, available in an offshore oil rig. It separates the sand and uh, fine uh, silt present in the uh, mud, return mud, which is being processed. Okay, earlier we described in detail about degasser, so which, which helps in the removal of gas. So this equipment is the vacuum degasser. So this helps in removing the dissolved gas in the mud. So that is in brief about the mud system uh, equipment, all details. We saw all the process, we saw all the equipment. So now we will go to the question and answer session. Okay, we will, I'll, I'll be reading the uh, questions. Just okay. Okay. First question: uh, Can you please tell what type of pumps, electric driven or hydraulic driven, are supercharged pumps? Okay. So these pumps are electric driven. Supercharged pumps are electric driven. So uh, uh, that is a answer for that question. So as stated earlier, these pumps uh, like. Uh, around I think the motor capacity comes around uh, 100 horsepower that is a motor capacity which is coming for supercharged pumps okay so we will move to the next question uh, what is a movable and flexible pipe in a high pressure mud system called movable and flexible pipe in a high pressure mud system uh, I'm not clear about that question. Uh, movable and flexible pipe. Usually, for flexibility, we provide mud hoses. So, uh, I'm not clear about that question. What is a movable and flexible pipe in a pressure system? Uh, not clear. The question is not clear to me. Uh, please state, if possible, please state uh, more details. You can post it as a next question. So I'll explain the flexibility in the system uh, if that is required. Like in the mud system, we use hoses for flexibility. Like the when due to the drill floor movement, we we will require flexibility in the supply piping system. So that cases we use uh, huge uh, pressure rated hoses. Like the hoses will be rated for the system design pressure, which will be 7,500 psi. So hoses will be will have a burst pressure four times the design pressure. Like for if we design for 7,300 psi, the burst pressure of the hose will be 30,000 psi, which will be four times the design pressure or working pressure. So that hoses ensure the flexibility in the work system. Uh, this uh, movable and flexible pipe uh, detail which you are asking is actually not clear to me, but I explained the hoses. You can provide more details okay and uh, there is another question can you send these slides on mail yeah this uh, recording will be shared with all the attendees so you can uh, see the recording the slides uh, detail also will be in the recording okay so that answers and uh, 
next question we will go to the next question what is the pressure rating of supercharging pump yeah this system designed for uh, 150 psi so supercharge pumps uh, pressure rating like is designed for 150 psi discharge so the purpose we described it takes suction from the mud pits and supplies to the uh, mud pump so there is a purpose so there is a design pressure rating similarly flow or like flow rate will be uh, like 1000 gallons per minute that will be the approximately 100 to 1000 gallons per minute will be the normal flow rate which we see in the offshore jacket uh, oil rigs okay uh, do we get a participation certificate no there will not be any participation certificate because this is not a course this is actually an informative webinar more details uh, we haven't gone to the depth of the subjects uh, when we when we saw the concept of each system once we see the detailed system like uh, we it is much more detailed like the piping designer will add more connections more bypass more systems to attain uh, for each operation there will be more lines so this webinar which we see now is the concept webinar so it is not going to uh, certify uh, any special uh, quality so we are not giving participation certificate for the webinars okay uh, that is the questions which uh, was asked okay why do we yeah there is a question which i can see why do we add chemicals for mud processing okay okay that is uh, for uh, as we stated earlier uh, we add chemicals like to attain different property like during drilling the well uh, that depending on the depth uh, of the well and uh, depending on the surface which we are drilling like if you are drilling through sand uh, it will be the mud required will be different property also if you are required to uh, drill through uh, i mean the uh, rock formation so it will require different property of mud so density has to be varied or uh, to remove certain type of cuttings like uh, uh, thicker cuttings or bigger cuttings rock cuttings etc we may have to vary the viscosity so in that case the mud property has to be changed so there is a mud engineer in the offshore oil rig so he is the uh, person solely responsible for changing the property of the mud so the mud engineer what he does is he frequently checks the property of the mud which comes in the mud pit area also he checks the cuttings which is accumulated in the shell shaker area so by analyzing these properties and seeing the cuttings the mud engineer uh, will get the idea about the uh, well condition inside so he prepares the mud accordingly so to increase the density which we uh, explained earlier we add barrier to the uh, mud similarly to increase the viscosity we add bentonite also if we have to if we see the mud property like the uh, alkaline property but is losing alkaline property so in that case we add caustic soda so these are the chemicals which we add to attain the various properties for but depending on the well condition okay we uh, there is a question uh, what type of pump is used for the okay uh yeah which are the companies uh supplying mud pumps okay the which companies offer uh, high pressure mud pumps okay so this uh, high pressure mud pumps are uh, uh, like supplied by uh, nov uh, cameron okay so and various other companies are there uh like uh, wh work okay so all these companies supply mud pumps so it is a huge equipment so these mud pumps as we uh, uh, described earlier is posted displacement pump it, the newer rigs have designed mud pumps for 7500 psi maximum pressure okay so we will see the next 
uh, question uh, what type of pump is used for the transfer of mud of the mud will be in a uh, slurry form okay so when when we describe about transfer uh, like first process is uh, using supercharged pumps which is centrifugal pumps uh, even though the mud is in slurry form this centrifugal due to attaining higher uh, quantity and chloride we use centrifugal pumps for feeding to the mud pumps and the mud pump is a positive displacement pump that is a piston pump so it is uh, it gives a less flow rate but it attains uh, high, it helps to attain higher pressure so we use a positive displacement pump uh, as the mud pump so that is a transfer process which happens and in the other areas like uh, trip tank pumps which is 200 to 300 gallons per minute pumping uh, which is smaller pumps so that is centrifugal pumps uh, which are used there because there is no requirement to build up pressure for trip tank operation only building up pressure operation is happening in the mud pump which is in the mud pump room. so that is a post displacement pump so that answers the question yeah any more question yeah okay will you give certificate of participation uh, there will not be any certificate for participating in the webinar you will receive a follow-up mail after the webinar with all the details also you will receive the recording of the webinar uh, which can be used for a detailed study or as a reference okay so that answers the questions uh, is there okay any more we can if any more questions you can post it in the q and a yes uh, i think i think that is all the questions uh, no more questions i can see okay so in that case we can wind up the webinar uh, if you have more questions uh, we we can take up more we have time a lot of time is not completed okay so that's the case now we will wind up the webinar there are no more questions okay so thank you thank you for attending the webinar the next webinars will be uh, announced in linkedin uh, in the and in the company website so it you all the all that this will get invitation through email for the next webinar okay so thank you bye bye